Father, in the name of Jesus, we bless your name. We thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your people. Thank you for the connection between us and heaven. I pray there will be a mighty explosion of miracle in every life in Jesus' name. You have blessed this church, oh Lord, I pray. Your blessing will multiply on the church in this country in Jesus' name. All our leaders, all our workers, all our members, all our invitees, I pray at this time the miracle power of God will touch everyone. As your word comes forth, let it come with power, with anointing that will break every yoke. And I pray, O oh Lord, all the blessings we have got in this program will be. Permanent. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. We're looking at Obadiah chapter 1, verse 17. Obadiah chapter 1, verse 17. The Lord has done great things for us. That's why the people of God are rejoicing. Obadiah chapter 1 verse 17 But upon Mount Zion shall be deliverance and there shall be holiness and the house of Jacob shall possess their possession as we come to the deeper life camp here you will see very clearly their welcome to the mount of transfiguration for us that is Mount Zion and in this place every time with the support of the almighty God upon our leaders over here and with God working with them every time you come here there will be deliverance every time you show up here there will be holiness and the people of God in this land will possess their possessions in Jesus name now I'm going to talk to you briefly after that we're we'll still going to have prayer together I'm talking on possessing and preserving your miracles when God has blessed us we need to retain what God has done that miracle whether it's miracle of salvation miracle of sanctification miracle of healing miracle of deliverance miracle of extraordinary things we must know how to keep that thing how to preserve it so that we will not be falling and rising that's why we are looking at possessing and preserving your miracles there are three things we are going to look at number one connection connection what brings miracles in our lives it is connection it's like there is electricity but you see that switch on the wall when you turn it on there is a connection there that brings light into the house you see water and then when you turn on the faucet then the water will bring will come out because there is a connection you see all those children how did the children come between the husband and the wife there was connection connection is very important in life if you are just isolated and you don't have connection with anybody miracles will not come number one connection 
Continuation. It is when we continue. Life comes to you when you are connected. And when you continue, the life will be getting better and better, richer and richer. Continuation. 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 You will continue. I said you will continue. Number three, conservation. Conservation. Many people don't conserve what they have. That's what they were rich many years ago. Today they are poor. They were strong many years ago. Now they're weak. They were holy and righteous many years ago, but now they are sinful. The mighty and powerful, they were mighty and powerful before. But now they are weak and anemic. And they did not conserve and preserve and retain and keep what they are. Conservation. Number one. Connecting with the Lord's might. The might is the strength. The might is the power. Connecting with the Lord's might. Number two. Continuing in the Lord's message. Continuing in the Lord's message. Number three. Conserving the Lord's miracle. Conserving the Lord's miracle. Number one. Connecting with the Lord's might. How does miracle come? By connection. In Matthew chapter 11. Matthew chapter 11. Matthew chapter 11. Reading from verse 28. He says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. And I will give you rest. Come unto me. Connect with me. Don't stay far away. Leave where you are. Come unto me. And when you come to me, there will be a connection. You are on earth. He came from heaven. It is the connection that brings heaven to earth. You are in darkness. He is in the light. It's your connection that will bring light into your life. You are sick. He is a healer. It's a connection that will bring healing to your life. You are oppressed and afflicted. What is the deliverer? It is a connection that will bring deliverance to your life. You are a captive. You are in the prison. He is the liberator that.
by the grace of God I will come again and it is when you continue and I continue and your continuity and my continuity they join together it is two of us agreeing together the pastor making up his mind he will continue are you members of the church making up your mind you will continue it is when the continuation continuity of you and I come together there will be an explosion of miracles an explosion of power it will happen I said it will happen in Romans chapter 11 reading from verse 22 Romans 11 verse 22 it says, behold therefore the goodness and the severity of God on the which fell severity one hour yet day but toward the goodness now why yet day am i one hour in his goodness sir what's not a more if thou continue in his goodness that's why the lord is telling us that the secret of power in our lives and the secret of maintaining the miracle power of god in our lives is to continue to continue to continue where we will continue and say to us yet no more yet no more in first timothy chapter four first timothy chapter four verse 15 you see, you see how important it is to continue. For Timothy chapter 4 verse 15. Meditate upon these things. Keep thyself holy unto them. That the prophet he may appear unto all. Take heed unto thyself. And also the doctrine. Continue in them. Take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine, the teaching of the word of God we're receiving. He says, Take heed. Sometimes some neighbors will say, Why are you keeping to the word of God so strict? Other people have liberty to twist it and change it and modify it. But you say, No, I'm going to continue as it was given unto me. And it is that abiding in the world without changing anything, modifying anything, adulterating the word of God, diluting the word of God. Not to say this is what I got, and I'm going to continue like that. It is that that multiplies the blessings of God upon our lives. That's why it says, Take it to yourself at the time of temptation, take it to yourself at the time of trial, take it to yourself at the time when you are getting married, take it to yourself at the time of the wedding ceremony, take it to yourself when somebody. Somebody has died, and we're doing the funeral ceremony. Take heed unto thyself. And when Papa or Mama dies, and then all the villagers will say, This is how we do it, and they want to bring it tradition. Take heed unto yourself and to the doctrine. And sometimes leaders change. What I mean is, uh, Brother A, Pastor A is here now. Another time pastor b welcome take heed on yourself that even when we change pastors and we move them around the doctrine does not change the lifestyle does not change and the understanding of the practice of the world does not change take heed on yourself and to the doctrine continue in them for in doing this thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee we'll take it unto ourselves we're going to continue the word of God it is that continuation 
that makes the power of God to abide and rest and multiply in our lives and the blessings will multiply in Jesus name Second Timothy chapter 3 verse 14. Second Timothy chapter 3 verse 14. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned. Continuing in the Lord's message. Continue in the things which thou hast learned. And then it tells us and has been assured of. Now, knowing of whom thou hast learnt there. Number one, connect. Number two, continue. Number three, conserve. Conserve. Keep it. We're going to keep it. I said we'll keep it. You and I will keep it in Jesus' name. Conserving the Lord's miracles. How do we, con how do we conserve the Lord's miracles? You see there are many people, they get healed now. By the time you see them in two, three months, you say, what happened to you? You say, I don't know. I got it at that time, but I don't know where it is now. I'm going to give you the key now. Everybody say the key. How do I keep my miracle? How do I preserve my miracle? How do I make sure that this miracle I've got now by the time we come back together again that miracle will still be there it will be there I said it will be there you see when to keep the miracle M I R A C L E S miracle everybody see miracles M, that's your mouth. I, that's your instruction. R, that's for righteousness. A, that's anointing. C, that's commandment. L, that's the landmark. E, that is example. S, that's the standard. To keep your miracles, Keep your mouth. Keep your mouth. Some people get something, they lose it with their mouth. I remember something. He lost all the power he got through his mouth. I keep the instruction. Keep that instruction. R, keep his righteousness. A, keep the anointing. L, keep the landmarks. You see, there are landmarks in the word of God. And the people who tamper with the landmarks in the word of God, they don't keep their possession. And the children of people, the children of God, the people of Israel, they will keep their possession. Possess their possession. We must keep the landmarks in the territory of that possession. And then Jesus has shown us the example. You see that from the beginning of the life of Christ to the very end of the life of Christ, he kept his power. He kept his miracles. He kept his dignity. He kept his attributes. He kept the favor of the Father. He kept everything as God. You keep his example. And let's lift up a standard. And it is when we keep the standard. That's why the miracle power of God is kept in our midst. Let's go over that one by one. M, what is M for? 
I said, what is M for? Tell me out loud. Keep your mouth. Keep your mouth. Keep your mouth. In Proverbs chapter 13, verse 3. Proverbs chapter 13, I'm looking at verse 3. This is why some people lose their miracle. This is why they lose their privilege. This is why they lose their promises. This is why they lose all the provision of the Lord for them. They don't keep their mouth. Proverbs chapter 13 verse 3. He that keepeth his mouth keepeth his life. But he that openeth wide his leaves shall have destruction. In Proverbs chapter 21 verse 23. Proverbs 21 verse 23. Here is what the word of the Lord is telling us. Whoso keepeth his mouth and his tongue keepeth his soul from troubles. Keep your mouth, keep your tongue. Because in that tongue has the power of life and death. That's why the Lord is saying, if you're going to keep your miracle, you will keep your mouth. You will not say, I don't know whether I've got it or not. You confess positively. Praise the Lord, I've got my miracle. Praise the Lord, my miracle is still there. Praise the Lord, by his stripes I'm healed. Praise the Lord, I have the anointing that breaks the yoke. That keeps you strong all the time. The next word is keep his instruction. Keep his instruction. Proverbs chapter 4 verse 13. Proverbs 4 verse 13. It says in verse 13, Take fast hold of instruction. Let her not go. Keep her for she is thy life. The instruction the Lord is giving us after we're healed. The instruction the Lord is giving us after we're delivered. The instruction the Lord is giving us after He has given us salvation. John chapter 5, verse 14. In John chapter 5, verse 14. Instruction. The instruction of the Lord. If we're going to keep our miracle, John 5 14. It tells us, it says, after what Jesus findeth him in the temple and said unto him, Behold, thou art made whole, sin no more, lest a worse thing come unto thee. Keep your mouth. Keep his instruction. Keep his righteousness. How can you have miracles without keeping righteousness? Don't let that R drop out in your miracle. The Lord favors the righteous. The Lord blesses the righteous. The Lord exalts the righteous. The Lord overloads and Lord gives him blessing every day when we remain righteous. Psalm 106, I'm reading from verse 3. Psalm 106, we're looking at verse 3. 106 verse 3. Look at what the word of God is saying. It says, Blessed are they that keep judgment, and he that doeth righteousness at all times. Doeth righteousness at all times. At home, righteousness. In the school, righteousness. College, university, righteousness. In the church, righteousness. Among the workers, righteousness. In the private, righteousness. In the public, righteousness. When you are alone, righteousness. When you are with other people, righteousness. The blessing of the Lord. The miracle of the Lord is with the people that keep the righteousness of the Lord. And then the anointing. Yeah, everybody say anointing. There's an anointing that breaks every yoke. 
that anointing must remain there all the time. That anointing must remain there all the time. We're told in Leviticus chapter 21 verse 12. Leviticus chapter 21 verse 12. Look at what he's saying about this anointing. In verse 12, neither shall he go out of the sanctuary, nor profane the sanctuary of his God for the crown of the anointing oil on of his God is upon him. I am the Lord. We do not allow the anointing of the Holy Ghost to depart from our lives. What makes some people lose the anointing of the Holy Ghost? What is it that today they are filled with the Holy Ghost and tomorrow they are so shallow and empty of the Holy Ghost? My anointing will remain. I said my anointing will remain. How about you? Say it for yourself. Tell me out loud. What makes people to lose the anointing of the Holy Ghost? And hey, look at this in Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4, I'm reading from verse 30. And grip not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby he has sealed unto the day of redemption. How do people give the Holy Ghost? And when they grip the Holy Ghost, the anointing gets away from their lives. Look at verse 31. Bitterness. Verse 31. Bitterness. In verse 31, there's wrath. Verse 31, there's anger. There's clamor. There's evil speaking. That's why it says, let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. You see people who are bitter. Somebody offended them, they'll never forgive, they'll never forget. What she did five years ago, ten years, I've not forgotten. You will lose the anointing and you lose the miracle. But you said, let all bitterness be taken away from you. All wrath and argument and fuming, let that be taken away from you. All anger and clamor people speaking gossip but biting be put away from you with all malice and be ye kind one to another uh, tender, tender hearted forgiving one another even as God for Christ's sake has forgiven you that's what will make the anointing to remain your anointing will remain in Jesus name See, is for his commandment. You see, when you keep the commandment of the Lord, it is that that makes that miracle to remain in your life. Some people, they just say, okay, I've got my miracle. They do not know how to preserve that miracle. How to conserve that miracle. How to keep that miracle. As you are going home, your miracle will go with you. Anywhere you go, everywhere you go, your miracle will go with you. In Jesus' name. Keep his commandments. Keep his commandments. Exodus chapter 15, verse 26. Exodus chapter 15, verse 26. See what the Lord is saying. The Lord is saying, and he said, If thou wilt. Did gently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God. And will do that which is right in his sight. And will give ear to his commandments. And will give ear to his commandments. And will give ear to his commandments. And keep all his statutes. I will put none of these diseases upon thee. Which are brought upon the Egyptians. For I am the Lord 
God that he lets thee. Will continue the commandments of the Lord. And when you love the Lord, the commandments of the Lord are not grievous. You enjoy, you delight in the commandments of the Lord. In Proverbs, Proverbs chapter 22, verse 28. Proverbs chapter 22, verse 28. Remove not the ancient landmark which thy fathers have set. Remove not the ancient landmarks which your fathers have said. When God called Abraham, he gave him the landmark. All those landmarks of blessings he passed on to Isaac. Isaac did not remove any of the landmarks before passing it on to Jacob. When Jacob had all those 12 sons, he transferred everything 
everything unto them, everything was intact. And then Moses came and God gave it to Moses, everything, all the landmarks. And then Joshua came and he said, every place the soul of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you. And he gave him the territory from here to there, from there to here, all the landmarks. And now, spiritually, Jesus has given us the landmarks. All power in heaven and on earth is given unto me. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. And then he said, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And then he says, Lo, I'm with you until the end of the world. Those are the landmarks that's given us. All the teachings of the word of God. Until the very end. And I praise God when I come to the country Ghana here. I praise the Lord because we have kept it until this time. And we're going to keep on keeping it until the very end in Jesus' name. As I told you before, I started coming here in 1978. Our two overseers here will remember. And when I came in 1978, I went to a great crusade. And I think uh, both our pastors, Pastor John and Pastor Edward, they will remember we had all, you know, I, I came from Nigeria and then we wanted to follow up. We had about 750 people that were following us. And then I met with all the pastors that helped us at the crusade. And then they asked me, they said, what are you going to do here? Now crusade is over. I said, we're going to have deeper Christian life ministry. They said, what do you teach? And then I said, we teach virtually the Bible, the whole landmarks. And I said, this, 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 and this. Oh, the pastors so, the miracles we have got will be multiplied. Everybody say multiplication. Say that again, multiplication. Say that again, multiplication. What are you? Let me see a multiplied this thing upon your life. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for what you've done for us this weekend. You have magnified the name of Jesus. You have drawn your people near. We have connected with you. You have given us salvation. You have given us eternal life. You have healed us who are sick. You have delivered the oppressed. You have broken every yoke. You have done my miraculous things in the lives of people. I pray, Lord, all the miracles will remain in Jesus' name. Right now, I come with the power that breaks every yoke. In every life over here, I break the yoke. Every cause in your life, I remove in Jesus' name. Any sickness that is still there, any infirmity that is still there, any oppression that is still there, I come in the explosive power of the anointing of the Holy Ghost to you right now. Sickness come out in Jesus' name. All those paths of darkness be broken in Jesus' name. Those blind eyes, those dim eyes, I command you be open. Any fire, the swelling in your body come out in Jesus' name. Any kind of ailment, affliction, sickness, disease, I command you, be healed in Jesus' name. Anything that is trying to trouble your brain or trouble your mind, I bring the peace of God and the calmness of God in your mind, in your brain, in your personality, in Jesus' name. 
adie bi atete wa adwene ade wa hobo adwene mna onye ne gie me se nya me asom dwe nya me su onwuno ewu abra boni mu e wo yesu de mo i command blessing in every life and shall so be a shall so in every family and shall so blessing upon the leaders and the workers and shall make the for the born all our volunteers and all our full time workers oh lord i pray your blessings will multiply in every life in jesus name and share about so for one of full time, one of only full time. So, and share about BBR. So, I'm busy on you So, I will yes, them all. Those who are looking up to the Lord for marriage, oh Lord, this year, give them the breakthrough. Those who are married and there is no child yet, I pray miracle children, miracle children, come to the married families in Jesus' name. One of our young men, Yama, may send Sanchia Nema and Sanchia Nemra and Ramosu, yes, to them. The Lord anoint all of you. Anoint your hands. Anoint your mouth. Everything you say will come to pass. You will lay hands on the sick, they shall recover. The power of the Lord will go with you. And the covering of the blood of Jesus will go with you. As you go back home, protection upon your life. Prosperity upon your life. The goodness of the Lord upon your life. You will go from strength to strength. You will go from power to power. You go from one level of achievement to another. When I see you again, the joy of the Lord will be your strength. Confirm it in every life, O Lord. I thank you because I know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody say, Amen, 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 Amen.